what do you feel like you have to, to do to, to lock some things up for, for postseason and hosting things like, things like that? Well, I, I think we're in good shape right now as it stands. Um, unfortunately, TCU's RPI isn't going to help us any win or lose. So uh, our goal is to obviously win this tournament and just let our win-loss record kind of take care of the NCAA seeding part of it. So this, this, this game doesn't affect any NCAA seeding? It, it can if you're not successful in it um, because their RPI isn't that great. But the big picture is our girls are focused on trying to win this tournament. Um, last year we got close, lost late in the semifinals before you know chance to play for it all. Uh, we're getting healthier by the day. We're pretty excited about the way we're playing defense. And so um, it might take a win or two to solidify us getting back here for the NCAA tournament, but a lot of that's regional also. You know, We need some other teams within four or five hours of here or a short flight away to also win so that they could. Uh, it would make sense for the NCAA to bring them here. Do you like going to KC as opposed to going to San Antonio? Well, we really wanted to stay in the state of Texas because uh, our fans can get there a lot easier and we generally get warmer weather. But it's a beautiful facility. The guys at this uh, that are putting this on and the Big 12 have really done a first class job taking care of all the teams, setting it up. It's a brand new field. They built it <clears throat> with the whole idea of having tournaments like this for the Big 12. Uh, the field's supposed to be amazing. So barring the rain that they're getting right now, I think uh, we're looking forward to getting to a place that's going to be really ready for this type of event. Coach, kind of like you said, their RPI is down with TCU. It, if you guys tack on a bunch of goals, but it's it, it's not the same thing as kind of football. Then I take it mm. if you put a bunch of goals up on them. No, in college soccer, they're really uh, emphasis the, the high emphasis on seeding is in the RPI, and uh, you have to just deal with whatever the RPI is of your opponent. But 50% of that mathematical formula is your win loss. That's why I said if you can win the game or tie the game, then your win loss stays really strong, and that's 50% of your RPI math. 25% is what your opponents do, and the last 25% is what your opponent's opponents do. <laughs> and you can't get caught up in worrying about all that stuff because there's nothing you can control there. Just your own team, and you're hopeful that you're successful and uh, can keep building on that, that uh, the math part of, the, of your record. You finish an unbeaten conference season. You just missed out on a regular season conference title. Because of all of that, how, how bad do you guys want that trophy at the end of it? Well, there was no real relief at the end of the season. I think the girls knew they were close, obviously one point away. Uh, they would have been co-champions, and having beaten them head-to-head, -head, that would have been you know, it. So as opposed to taking their foot off the gas and feeling like they've accomplished something, I think all they've done is just build their confidence, but they don't have their hands around any hardware yet. So I think you've still got a real hungry, eager team on our hands, and as a coach, that's perfect. And that has to just automatically build some excitement, especially going to TCU, correct? It does, and you know we know it'll be tough to beat TCU twice. Um, very good coaching staff on board there. They'll have something cooked up for us, but I think our girls really focus on our game, what we do well, and making sure that if we play our best, we're tough to beat. Speaking on the mentality, how much does that have to do with it being so close last year and then having to beat TCU twice? You know, I think when you go through the whole Big 12 season, everyone realizes in-conference play is so hard, regardless of people's rankings or who's got the best roster. All these games are so tight. So to play TCU again, um, we know it's going to be a tough challenge. However, uh, our team has played really well most of this year. We haven't had a whole lot of downside, and uh, that gives us great confidence going into the tournament. Do you feel like you're in a good position to win the tournament considering the pivotal three games at the end of the regular season? Well, most importantly, we're in really good position to play our best soccer. And what you're alluding to is exactly right. When you finish the season with Kansas, Texas, and West Virginia, you're finishing with three of the best teams in the tournament, and certainly three of the hardest teams for us to play against. And uh, that prepared us. For this, for this opportunity, because it pushed us to another level, I think defensively and across our back line that we hadn't had to be at, and that definitely serves us up to be in, uh, in good shape. Do you like the idea of potentially re-meeting them so close to those wins? I don't know who we want to re-meet. We just want to keep winning. You know, you can start thinking about, oh, I like this matchup or I like that matchup, and the reality is uh, you're going to have to beat three really good teams, and they're all going to watch each other. Everyone's going to be worn down by the end of the week, and one of the strengths, I think, of this particular Texas Tech squad is we are deep. And to play three games in five days, if you only have 14 players, you're not winning this thing. We've got over 20, and they can all play. And so, barring any health issues, I think our depth will be a, could be, if we go far enough, a big weapon in this tournament. Speaking on that, how healthy are you all? As healthy as we've been in four or five weeks, there's no doubt about it. You know, we've kind of been in and out with a couple players. The two-week break got him almost all the way back, but then went straight into West Virginia, straight into Texas. So that was tough, but uh, we're, we're probably as healthy as we've been in four or five weeks. You know, I think we, we hit our bye at a good time. We were able to um, you know, recuperate and, and risk some injuries, and now we're just starting to fly through. So we had you know, three, three hard games since the bye, and we're just using that momentum to carry us through into the tournament. 
you feel like you're playing your best soccer right now as a team? Yeah, I think the team's doing a really good job. You know, our defense is strong. We're scoring goals up front, which is great. So, yeah, I think we're, we're going into this tournament um, at a fairly good stage. Uh, how bad do you get, because you just barely missed out on the regular season title, how bad do you guys want this tournament title? You know, maybe even more than we wanted the actual conference now. Um, that slipped out of our hands before the last game, so we could, last two games, sorry, so all we could do is try and take care of the last few games that we had, but now this is still within our grasp, the, the trophy's still up for grabs, so we can hope to make the most of that. And with the trophy being still up for grabs, kind of talk about it as a senior, what are you telling these girls or, or how are you leading the team to make sure you guys get that done? Yeah, I mean, it's it's important to us seniors. We'll try to reiterate to the, to especially the, the newcomers, but also just the underclassmen that this is this is our final year and, and we'd really, really want this for not only ourselves, but the rest of the team and, and also the girls who have left who didn't manage to, to get hold of a title. So it's, it's for us eight seniors, but also for the rest of the team. You feel like you're in a groove individually right now? Uh, yeah, I guess you could call it a groove. Um, I think I said it before, I kind of took it upon myself to put myself in a scoring position in all three of these games, and that's exactly what I've done. I mean, credit to everybody else on our team for getting us this far, and it's really great that we have so many people on this team that can score and that do, especially when other people um, step up and score in those big games like they had early in the season. I mean, I think half our team has scored, which is a stat that not many teams can say that they have. What's the pressure like? Uh for you to put on yourself to make sure that your seniors go out with a bang, because I'm sure you're going to want the same exact thing. Yeah, I mean, after last year, I definitely put a pressure on myself that didn't need to be there and kind of took a toll on me at the beginning of the season. But um, the pressure to get this title for our seniors is just kind of, it's kind of like a happy pressure. You know, we want, we want that so bad for our seniors, and they want it more than anybody in this conference does. So, you know, that a uh, regular season trophy slipping away from us was pretty frustrating, um, but you know, it just gives us even more motivation to go into this tournament and win. What's Stone's uh, message to you on preparation for this? You know, just keep doing us, doing um, our style of soccer, playing how we play, and you know, if we do that, then we have shown this conference that we are the best team. We haven't lost a game, which is pretty incredible, I think, but his message is just, just be us and go in and fight hard, and, you know, he said it himself, our depth is ridiculous, and it's what's going to get us through this tournament when the two teams that get there on Sunday have already played two hard-fought games, and it's going to be cold, and, um, you know, we're going to be tired, but we fight more than anybody in this conference, and, you know, we're fearless. Our school says it itself, so, um, you know, that's just what he says, be ourselves. After weekend games, over and over again, what's it like to play a bunch of games all stacked together? Um, well, it kind of reminds me of when I was younger, you know, club soccer, you play two games in one day when you're little. But, um, you know, it's just like I said, we need to fight. And we're going to be tired and we're going to, you know, we're going to say, you know, I want to quit, but we won't. And um, it'll be difficult for sure. It's not going to be an easy road. You know, TCU is going to give us a battle that we haven't seen yet this season because they know what we're like and we know what they do. So it's going to be, it's going to be hard, but, um, you know, we'll fight and we'll get there. Going into this, uh, how do you think this will hurt or help your NCAA seeding? Well, um, I think we've put ourselves in a great position. You know, being undefeated in conference, that's nothing that anybody can anymore. But if we win this tournament, uh, you know, we have an automatic seed in the NCAA. And we're in a really good spot. We're the highest we've ever been ranked. We're playing our best soccer. We're scoring lots of goals, and we're not giving up goals, which is something that many teams in the country can't say right now. And, you know, Victoria is keeping it really clean back there. Our defense is playing awesome. So when we win this tournament, it's going to give us a great opportunity to be a high seed in the NCAA. And, you know, we got to take care of this first before we think of that. But we're in a great position now, and hopefully by the end of the week, we'll, even, we'll be in an even better one. Janine, we talked to you, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday, I can't remember, over at the facility. We were talking about we're going to beat UT. You come out first three, four minutes of the game, score the goal. And you, you guys just kind of seem like you guys really have that swag. You kind of lead, even though you're a sophomore. Just kind of talk about how you, you're only a sophomore, but you kind of lead by example. Well, um, you know, in the whole recruiting process, Tom talked to me about, um, you know, this could be a place where you have an impact on this facility, or this program. And, I mean, you know, I took that to heart, and that was something that really stuck with me throughout, obviously, all year last year. And, you know, it's carried me through this year, too. I haven't played the same role that I played last year, I mean, as in I haven't scored as many goals and, you know, um, been on the stats as much as I was last year. But as far as leading this team by example, you know, that's all I can do. We have our captains, and our captains are our captains for a reason, and they speak vocally, and I do all I can as a sophomore to lead 
as I can on the field. And I hope that what I'm doing is a reflection of who I am and uh, has an impact on my teammates. And, you know, it looks like it has. We come out every game ready to play and, you know, we want to get the goal early. And I was, you know, lucky enough to do that. But I try to lead by example as much as I can. And, you know, credit to my teammates there. Everybody leads on our team. There's not specific people that I can point out and say, oh, you're not a leader. Everybody's a leader. So, you know, it's, it's special to be pointed out as a leader on the field, but um, everybody has their role.